Well, it's out, and now the left is piling on. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And no sooner do Republicans call for slashing trillions in spending over the next decade than the president and the woman who wants to be president get slamming. To South Dakota Republican Congresswoman Christine Ohm, who says they're slamming the wrong thing. Congresswoman, good to see you. What they're saying is your budget doesn't help the middle class. What they want to do does. What do you say? This budget that the House is putting forward is going to create an opportunity uh, economy. And that's exactly what we need to do to make the kind of investments in this country and take care of the priorities of the federal government. This budget will actually balance. That's something the president's budget has never done. In fact, even when he increases taxes, he still doesn't balance his budget. So I can certainly understand why he doesn't understand this type of approach. But this type of approach is exactly what our economy and what people need. Well, you know, your colleague Chris Van Hollen uh, said that w what you've got here is, is numbers that don't add up. He said it, it takes budget quackery to a new level, that some of the things that you spell out, you don't really, you know, add up. That, that a, the billion or trillion, I think, in savings that you expect to get, for example, in, in, in pairing some uh, benefit welfare programs and the like, you don't specify. So that leaves him thinking that you don't have those numbers. Is that true? Well, a budget lays out our priorities, and this budget specifically creates an environment where the economy can grow, and we take that into account. We expect by enforcing these policies and putting them into law in future bills that it will grow our economy, will create jobs, will protect hardworking taxpayers that are trying to make their paychecks uh, go even farther every single day, and it also makes sure that we secure our national security issues and our defense and make sure we have the kind of resources that we need to keep our men and women in the military trained and resourced. All right, so the one trillion in unspecified cuts for food stamps, welfare, and the like, uh, are you getting that figure by the, the type of growth you see once they're shifted or a lot of them to states? Is that what you're getting at? That's accounted for, but also in this budget, we make the government much more effective and accountable to people. So what we do is we get rid of duplicate programs. We create efficiencies within the bureaucracy that D.C. has created over decades of policies that did no good to actually delivering services to individuals. So this budget approaches it from a tax reform outline. It approaches it from a manner of releasing regulations and duplication of programs and also going out there and making sure that we're still funding the federal government priorities. This is the right way to approach federal government spending and to make sure that we're giving people more opportunities to go out there and live in a healthy economy that actually can grow. You mentioned health and I, I want to refer to Obamacare and how it would essentially be mm -hmm. cut under this initiative. The president didn't waste much time saying that uh, the actions you're taking on Affordable Care, uh, the Affordable Care Act to repeal it, would, would compromise 37 million Americans who get health insurance either through the Affordable Care Act or indirectly through Medicaid. What do you say? Well, the budget does repeal Obamacare, but we also have a replacement bill that takes care of those individuals. You know, it wasn't just Obamacare or nothing. We have some alternatives that are patient-centered, let people make their own decisions into the future, create more competition out there that's going to drive down costs. Obamacare has been a disaster, and we've seen that. So in this bill, we repeal it, but we also go back in and stop the way that uh, the mechanism that Obamacare is rating Medicare. And that's one of the big downfalls of Obamacare is that it's gone in there and jeopardized those programs that so many of our seniors rely on as well. You know what? It is amazing in this environment, and, and it is a toxic environment to your, your point at the outset, Congresswoman, that you are still going to be spending under this plan, I think, about $43 trillion over the next mm -hmm. 10 years uh, versus the president's plan, which is closer to 47 to $48 trillion. Um, so you're both, that is, both sides are spending a lot of money over the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. Nothing is being cut per se as much as the growth in some programs are being cut. Yet that is deemed inhuman and inhumane. How can you guys ever get together on this type of entitlement reform if even curbing the growth in a program mm -hmm. is, is deemed Freddy Kruegerish? It's going to be difficult with this president. This president has a completely different philosophical approach to the federal government. He believes that every decision should be made by the federal government. We believe that control should be with individuals and with people. And this budget reflects that. So when it comes to big policies, it will be tough to find agreement with this president. But this outlines our vision for how we actually get this economy to grow, create jobs, make the government much more accountable to hardworking taxpayers, and still fund the priorities that the federal government should be funding like our military.
Do you think that everyone's in simpatico on this? It's always hard to do between parties, even within parties. Mm -hmm. uh, some of your Senate colleagues have expressed reservations about going too far. Susan Collins has said that she has the Ryan budget in the past, that it would be a tough mm -hmm. sell. Uh, is there still this Hatfield and McCoy's division among Republicans about how far to go? Tea parties who say you don't go, you haven't gone far enough. Mainstreamers who say, well, this is about right. Well, a budget is a resolution that we put forward that identifies priorities. And what I think is so important about the House budget is that it recognizes the fiscal situation our country is in. We cannot continue to spend more money than what we have. When we look at the actions the Federal Reserve will be faced with taking into the future and dealing with interest rates, we may be in a situation one of these coming years where we can't even service the interest on this country's debt. And that's a perilous situation to be in. So I think it's important that we recognize that. We take action to make sure that we're putting our fiscal house in order and start figuring out a way to pay down that debt. For me, Neil, this has always been a moral issue. We should not be leaving this debt for our kids and our grandkids. That's why I ran to come to Washington, D.C., was to make tough decisions. And this budget funds the priorities that the federal government should be funding and returns power back to the states and the people to make decisions that they should have the control over. Now, I noticed in your budget, as I did in the president's, that they, they kind of factor in interest rates being about where they are right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They tick up in the latter part of the, de the decade. But by and large, where they are now, which seems to me to be quite unrealistic, that, that even mm -hmm. the Federal Reserve today, as you know, Congresswoman, uh, has hinted that rates are at least going to go up later this year. And who knows how much further after that. So do you think that this budget you've got is real? Well, I think it certainly is uh, what a budget should do. It should lay out your priorities and what we're hoping to accomplish through legislation over the next year. And certainly, uh, the Senate has the opportunity to do their budget. The president has shown us his budget. His budget was by far the most unrealistic document that I've seen in years. His budget raised taxes, took more money from the people across this country, and still didn't balance. It still ran a tremendous deficit and did nothing to do to do with addressing our fiscal situation. So, and he's got uh, a lot of tax hikes in there. You know, with the 10 years, he's got close to $2 trillion if you add them up. Now, I know you and other Republicans mm -hmm. have looked at closing loopholes. Some mm -hmm. of the purists in your party, Congresswoman, say closing a loophole is a tax hike. Do you agree with that? I do not believe that creating a fairer system are tax hikes. I think that the federal tax code has picked winners and losers for decades, and that needs to end. We need to lower our rates so we can be much more competitive on a world market and allow people to grow and to survive and thrive in a healthy economy. Uh, the president's approach and leaving things status quo simply, simply aren't acceptable, and that's why I'm very hopeful that we can get some of the tax reform done that we have basically outlined in this budget as well. But it seems like nothing really gets done until this president goes. What you're well, you saying, know, the, right? the, the president indicated he was willing to do business tax reform, but that's not very thoughtful. Um, he doesn't address pass-through entities. He doesn't address individuals. Uh, we have a very unfair tax code in all different brackets and all need to be addressed. So I'm very much in favor of doing comprehensive tax reform. If uh, this guy isn't going to do it, then we will do all that we can to protect as many people as possible and wait until we have a better leader. All right. Congresswoman, always good seeing you. Thank you very much, Christina. Yeah.